I grew up in San Antonio, Texas. I was primarily raised by my grandmother, my mom and dad, I love them. But they had issues that they were working through. And so in my neighborhood, the way things worked was uh, nobody got married, um, jobs were tough, drugs and alcohol was everywhere. So at by age 13, I recognized that my way out was football. Now you gotta understand, growing up in Texas, football was like a religion. We started early, I'm talking about eight, nine months old. Football was my God, and it was my God because it defined who I was and where I wanted to go and what gave me purpose in, in life. And on April 25th, 1993, I got drafted by the Colts in the fourth round. And that's like football mecca, the NFL. My rookie year, 1993, there was a guy on the team who, uh, he was different. And what he would do every day after practice, he was, Six foot two, 240 pounds, African-American guy. He would take a shower, dry off, and wrap a towel around his waist, then he'd walk through the locker room asking my teammates, do they know Jesus? In my mind, I'm thinking, why are you asking people, do you know Jesus? And I'm like, do you know you're half naked? And so his nickname was the Naked Preacher. That's what the veterans on the team said. So I tried to avoid the Naked Preacher at all costs. I didn't want nothing to do with his nakedness or the Jesus he was talking about. But one day I'm sitting in my locker and I feel a tap at my back and I turn around and it's the Naked Preacher. And he asked me a question that changed my life. He said, uh, and this is the way he talked. He said, uh, Rookie D. Gray, do you know Jesus? And I knew it was a religious question, but I didn't really know what to say. And so I said, I'm a good person. And he said, I want to read to you Romans 3.23. So with my unchurched background, I'm going Romans 3.23. What are these like Spartan gladiators or something? So anyway, he begins to read it and it says, we've all sinned and fall short of God's standard. I wasn't for sure what sin meant. So I was like, uh, naked man, what are you saying here? That my comparison of what's good and a bad person is with God and not others? He goes, yeah. I says, well, God's perfect, right? He goes, yeah. I said, well, if God's perfect, I'm not. What can I do to make it up? He says, you can't do anything. I said, thank you, man, hold on a second. You're telling me I can't do anything? He goes, right. I says, well, I'm in trouble. He goes, now you're starting to get it. Chill out, Rookie D. Gray. Let me explain. He said, 1 Corinthians 15, three and four says this. According to scripture, Jesus died, was buried, and raised on the third day for your sins. And I was like, I had never heard that. That's when I had my born again experience. I realized that the living God of the universe loved me. Now you gotta understand that was huge for me because I had never heard another man in my life say, Derwin, son, I love you. Now I was realizing that the God of the universe loved me so much that he came into time and space in the person of Jesus Christ. Before I became a follower of Christ, I hated to read. The only thing I read was the playbook, but now, I realized there was a better and more effective playbook called the Bible. I knew that if I studied the playbook and obeyed what the coach said, I could play good in the game. If I play good in the game, I help my teammates, I help my teammates, we win the game. As a young Christ follower, it just made sense to go, okay, here's God's playbook. As I study it and obey it, I become a better husband, I become a better father, I become better at all that I do. And so I recognize that I just wasn't reading a Bible about information, but about transformation. As the Word of God begins to be wallpapered in our minds, the love of God begins to overflow in our hearts that leads to the obedience of the Word of God where we serve. And so what happens is obedience isn't a burden, obedience is the outflow of the transformative Word of God, which empowers us by God's love.